Well, we think of the hurricane season as one season that begins in June and ends in November, but actually there are what I've identified as four seasons within the hurricane season, and we're in the final season of the hurricane season. Make sense? Take a look at this. This is the hurricane season. Again, sometimes you can get storms before and then after the official end and start of the season. But by and large, I mean, you you look in here. This is the heart of the season, right? From about August 15th um, through the month of September. That is the heart of the season. However, it's a little more complicated than that because I've identified four seasons within the season. Again, you could see all the storms here that we've had, but what, what I've identified is this. The four seasons, early season development is characterized by what? Homegrown development, right? That's what we see. We also see homegrown development when? Late in the season where we are right now. And in fact, when you look at the breeding ground for uh, November, you'll notice it's close to the United States. You see that? It, it changes quite a bit from October and certainly September than where it is right now. And the reason we see what we call homegrown development is because the only way to get development a lot of times this time of the year is with a dip in the jet stream or an interaction with the jet stream and the tropics. And there's a reason for that. You still have lots of warm water in the Caribbean or in the in the Atlantic, but boy, oh boy, wind shear. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear becomes very detrimental in the Atlantic. In fact, here we go. Here we're not even no we're not even in November, although last day in October. I mean any any tropical wave, look at the pathway it has to get. Just looking at today, they even make it into the Caribbean or move toward the United States. Just pockets of strong wind shear denoted by the purple. So for the most part, your African wave wave train season is over. That means you've got to look for homegrown development. That's the only way to get development this time of the year. Now, water temperatures are still warm, but these tropical waves will get shredded by the the westerly uh, wind shear across the Atlantic. Now, for those that don't know, the term homegrown development is a unique AccuWeather term. I never heard it in any place until I started here 35 years ago. And this is what it entails. It entails a uh, dip in the jet stream coming across the United States. Here's what it looks like here. So you get the jet stream southward, and what happens is the waters are still warm. Now you see this in early season, and you also see it in late season. So the way in which we get storms now, very typical or very similar to how we get storms when? During the uh, uh, early part of the season in June and July. So you bring this jet stream south, and think about it this way. In order to get the tropical development, you need showers and thunderstorms to form, right? You get that with tropical waves, but that's off the table. But the jet stream, cooler air coming in over the warm waters, you bring frontal boundaries and you bring jet upper lows into this area, right? And that's how you can start the process of showers and thunderstorms. And then you look at the other characteristics. What's the wind shear like? What's the water temperature right? What's the dry, what does the dry air look like? And then you can get development. So you see that a lot in the early season and late season. The other way, and it's part of the homegrown development process, what I should have put in here is you get gyres to form. Okay, that sounds complicated, right? It's really not. So you get this dip in the jet stream, right? And a gyre forms because you're changing the wind direction across Mexico and Central America. It's usually coming in out of the southeast. But when you get a dip in the jet stream here, and you need that to occur for about, I'd say 42 to three days, you change the wind flow, right? Across North, across Mexico and Central America out of the West Northwest. But you keep the easterly flow coming in across the Caribbean. So what you ended up doing is you start getting this, an anticyclotic wind flow here, a gyre or an area of low pressure. What happens with low pressure? upward motion, and then eventually you get an area of showers and thunderstorms that can then develop into a tropical system. Upper lows, fronts, and gyres, all due to the weather pattern. Okay, so moving forward, do we have any of that going on? Well, remember, the the equations haven't changed for tropical development. You need the warm water. We got that. Check. 
but these are the two limiting factors during the month of November. And if I would, if I would uh, say the one that is the most detrimental, wind shear, strong winds aloft. Now, let me show you something here, what the wind shear looks like across even the uh, even in the Caribbean and, and the Gulf here. This is our wind shear product here. So you're looking at the winds in the middle and upper part of the atmosphere, and it's color-coded. Where you see the red, there's too much wind shear. Take a look. Here is, here is Florida here, Gulf of Mexico. This is Monday. Closed down, too much wind shear. But you'll notice pockets in here, Southwest Caribbean. Let me go forward as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. Look at this, blue. You look at right in here, the 5th and the 6th. You see this area in here? Almost no wind shear. Almost none. So that's an area to watch. Now, just because you have low wind shear doesn't mean you're going to get tropical development. Remember, the way we get it is we need the pattern to produce it. Well, let's take a look at the pattern. And that's the idea behind the feed. I want you to look at the modeling and the tools that I use every day. And this is all powered by the AccuWeather Pro site. So early next week, you'll see this. Look at this dip in the jet stream coming on in. Now, this is Sunday. Monday, but it leaves Tuesday, so I don't think the dip in the jet stream is long enough to produce a gyre, but you know what I do see? I see this, an area of high pressure here, and oftentimes you look under the belly for development, under the belly of the high. That tells me that the area to keep an eye on if we get development is going to be in this zone, right in here, and that's the message on the feed. If we get any tropical development next week, it'll be in the Southwest Caribbean. And that's defeat.